Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about concentration and focus activities for children and a lot of you guys have written to me and you asked me for help on helping your children with focus and concentration. You want your children to be able to focus on school, to be able to focus on the tasks that you have for them, to be able to focus on you and the things you ask of them. So in this video, we're going to share with you some really fun and easy activities with common household items that you can do to help your children with focus and concentration. So before we get into the video, I just want to mention that concentration is like a muscle. So the more that you practice it, the better that you become. Children that are not good at concentration, it's not because they're lazy, it's not because they're rude, it's because they have not practiced concentration and focus enough. So... Another thing that I want to mention before we get into the activities is that there are things and factors that impair a child's attention span. Number one, sleep. Make sure your child is getting enough sleep, 10 to 11 hours a night. Number two, make sure your child is on a whole foods diet, that they're eating good, wholesome food. And number three, uh, screens. Screens are a huge factor. Uh, when you have a child in front of a screen, in a passive state with fast moving images, lots of color, lots of sounds, it overstimulates the child. And when they're removed from that environment and they're in a just ordinary environment, it's not something that grabs their attention anymore. So it's really important that you limit screens to one hour a day, no more than an hour a day, or just push it to the weekend. Just leave screens to the weekend. That's what we've done for years. And it's really, really helpful. So children, they create, they create bonds with screens. And they start to depend on screens for comfort and for self-regulation. So that is how you see parents at supermarkets, in cars, at restaurants. They have to have a screen in front of the child to be able to regulate them. And to be able to keep them calm. To be able to keep them sitting down. To be able to keep them quiet. And you don't want to resort to screens for that. The child should be able to learn how to self-regulate. So, let's get into the activities. And so, right now, Emily, we're going to be playing the glasses game, all right? Ready? Okay. So, you're going to be putting on these glasses, and I'm going to be setting a timer. I usually set the timer for one minute, but I'm going to set it for 30 seconds for the sake of our friends. So, you're going to be looking at me for... 30 seconds with your hands here on the table and just look at me for 30 seconds. So I like the glasses because you know you want to make it fun. So you're going to keep your eyes on me for 30 seconds. You're doing really good. We're already halfway there. And you want to just practice with them doing fun things like wearing funny glasses, doing funny things for a minute. S practice sitting still and it really, really helps children. All right, time's up. Now, I'm going to be putting on the glasses, all right? And you're going to be looking at me now for 30 seconds. Ready? And go. All right, Emily, so you're going to be looking at me for 30 seconds. So I usually do this for a minute at a time. I practice these activities with my three and my six-year-old. Emily is six here, and we practice these activities of sitting still and doing different activities where you hold your attention for a particular time and you sit still and you just look at the person in front of you. All right, you're doing very good. Very good. All right, time's up. All right, now we're gonna do something else. See this little ball? Yeah. I want you to bounce that ball for 30 seconds. Ready? Go ahead. Let's set the timer. And go. So you wanna use fun things because this is going to keep the child keep coming back to these activities. So right now, she's just playing with a little ball for 30 seconds. All right, doing good. The more that you practice this, the, the, the more that they're practicing, focusing on the activities that you're asking them to do. All right, stop. Now, for 30 seconds, we're going to just hold the ball and look at that little hole that's right there on the ball, the little spot right there on the ball. For 30 <laughs> seconds without moving. Ready, set, and go. All right. Let's see if you can do it without moving. Just look at the little spot on the ball. This is a little, a great activity. You know, practicing stillness is a skill. And it takes time and it takes practice for children to be able to sit down and do something. And doing very good, Emily. We're almost there. All right, time's up. You did great. Give me five. 
All right, now we're gonna do another game, all right? So I have these three cups, okay? <coughs> and I have this little cap, just like from a milk bottle. And I'm going it? to put the little cap right here in front of you, okay? <laughs> and now you need to focus on this little cap. First, we're gonna use two cups, all right? And I'm going to cover up the cap, ready? And I'm gonna switch it around, and I want you to tell me where that green cap is, okay? <laughs> where is it? Where's the green cap? You did it! <laughs> so the child really has to keep their eyes on that green cap. All right, let's do it again. Ready? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go faster now. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! All right, where's the green cap? All right, so they have to keep their eyes on it. Now we're gonna make it a little harder. I'm going to put the green cap with three cups now. Let's see. All right, where is that green cap? <laughs> you did it! So you just keep playing the game, very simple, very easy. Just use a little cap or a little bottle, uh, um, bottle cap, little ball, whatever you have, and just plastic cups. All right, let's move on to the next activity now. So we had this game, um, it's named Spot It. And this is a great game because they have to spot the difference. So basically there's two cards. And in these cards, there's different animals on these cards. The child has to look to see which animal is in the two cards, the same animal. So, I'm going to bring the camera a little closer and, sh and show you how she plays this game. Alright, so here's a spotty game. And you get two cards at a time and you set them out. The child has to look at the different animals um, and find out which animal is in both cards. There's only there's one animal that's present in both cards. So as you can see here, there's different animals. The grasshopper is in both of the cards over here. So that is how you play the game. Whoever identifies which two animals are in both cards wins and gets to have those cards for themselves. Then you get the next set. You could play with one child as well, but this is a two game player. Go ahead, Emily. Which two animals are there? In the same in the in blue the card. Sheep, blue sheep, blue sheep. sheep. Alright, and so Emily gets to have those two cards. Going on to the next one. So she has to look to see which animal is in both cards. Parrot parrot. Parrot, parrot. very good. So you keep it going and as you can see the child has to really focus and be able to see use their visual discrimination to see which animals um, are the same. Starfish. Starfish, starfish. And since they're different sizes, it's not always easy to tell. Mm. Hippo, hippo. Hippo, hippo. Very good. So you keep it going like this, and it's really focusing on finding those animals. Porky, find porky. Good job. All right, let's move on to the next activity. All right, we're moving on to the next activity, and we're working with Unifix blocks. So these are patterns that I'm giving her. So this one's yellow, blue, for example. So she needs to build it. Go ahead, Emily, and build yellow, blue, yellow, blue. So this is a good activity because they're working with patterns, so it's, you know, reasoning activity where they have to follow a particular A-B pattern in this particular instance. But you can also start with just having them put the blocks, um, just unite the blocks, and that is good enough for toddlers. But once they get past of being able to put the blocks together, you can move on to patterns. The great activity because they have to really focus on staying on track with the pattern it's also a great activity for fine motor development, hand-eye coordination, and hand strength for writing. So as you can see, she's built her tower here. Now let's move on to the next pattern, Emily. So this one's going to be red, white, green. So this one's a little bit more difficult. So it's ABC pattern. And so you're going to start off with red, okay? So go over here. Red, white, green. So let's go to the red. Red. And if you want to say it out loud to remind yourself, you can go ahead and say it. So you can stay on pattern. Right. Green. Good. Red. Red. White. Green. Good job. Red. So anything that the child is doing for a long time, any type of sit down work is going to work on that concentration and focus. Good job, Emily. Red, white, green. So it looks like she's building her pattern first and then putting it at the top. That's fine as well. All right, Emily, let's move on to the next activity now. 
The next activity is working with puzzles. Puzzles are a great activity to enhance focus and concentration as a child has to really focus on perseverance, problem solving. They have to really try the process of elimination to be able to figure out where the pieces go. You want to start with small puzzles. This one's a 12-piece puzzle by Melissa and Doug and then go on to 16-piece puzzles to 20-piece and so on as the child gets better. So as you can see, this one's a bit easy for Emily. This one's the one that my three-year-old is working on currently, the 12-piece puzzles, but you want to start small. Um, these are great. They also help with finger strength as the child is picking up and moving and twisting the pieces to fit them where they belong, working on the hand-eye coordination. So puzzles are definitely a great activity to work on attention span and concentration. This next activity is a visual attention folder and this has different find me activities. Um, so as you can see the ant is facing a particular way and you need to find the ant that are facing that way. And um, here's another one. There's a pear there and there's a lot of different fruits. So they really have to focus to be able to find the particular um, details. So you can see the hand is facing up. You have to find the hand facing up. Here's a happy face among all the different expressions, just different ones like that. And the folder goes on and on like that. The child has to find um, the different items and shapes and animals among all of them. So, ready? You ready to do the first one, Ant? Yeah. Okay, let's do the ant one first. So, you have to find all of those ants there. Go ahead and get started. And so again, this is focusing on visual discrimination as the child has to really focus to be able to see the different ants facing different ways. They want to be able to find the ant. As the child is focusing on looking at different images, they are really practicing, like we said before, focusing, practicing concentration. And as I said before, Focus and concentration is like a muscle. The more that you practice it, the better it becomes. And this translates, this goes on to academics and to other things that the child needs to be doing. So, Emily, see this one? This one's not facing the, that way. So, you know, you just correct the child. It has to be facing the other way. But you're doing very well otherwise. All right, Emily, let's go on to the next page here to show our friends one more. Let's see. Let's try... The happy face. Can you find all the happy faces here? Yeah. All right. So yes, like I was saying, concentration is truly a muscle that you develop. And as you work on different activities, different exercises like this, you're able to develop it. You're able to enhance it and make it longer for each child. All right. You've done well, Emily, showing our friends. We're going to move on to the next activity now. This next activity is sorting coins. So I have this little container with different coins. I have quarters, nickels, dimes, and pennies. And the child is focusing here on sorting these out. Now you can sort all different types of things. You can sort buttons, pom-poms, beans, stickers, whatever you have at home. Sorting is a great activity for concentration. The child is sitting down, doing a prolonged activity. They're using their mind to be able to reason, okay, this is where this belongs, this is where that belongs. It's just a great activity. It really doesn't matter what the child is doing, as long as they're sitting down, doing a focused activity. Uh, I find that sorting is a great activity because it is a precursor to math. So it, it really helps with a lot of mathematical concepts later on as they advance in math. And it's great for visual discrimination. So as you can see, this child is, is picking out all the pennies first. Then she's picking out all of the quarters and then all of the... So it doesn't matter how they do it. Some children will go one by one and sort like that. Um, but as long as they're just doing the activity without stopping, without interruptions, this is what you're looking for. All right, let's move on to the next activity. Okay, this next activity, I have these photo cards. And so I'm laying three cards out. We have juice, pot, juice, pot. and potato. Okay? Juice, pot, and potato. Look at it very carefully. Okay, I'm going to turn them over. All right. Do you remember where the potato was? 
Where's potato? All right. <laughs> Where is the pot? All right. Where is the juice? All right. Good job. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little more. We're going to have frog, mittens, and table. Look at it very carefully because I'm going to be turning it over, right? Okay. Now we're going to turn them over and see if you remember where they are. All right, Emily, where is the frog? Good. Where is the potato? Potato. Good. Where is the juice? Mm, the juice. All right. Where is the table? The table. All right. Where is the pot? The pot. Good. Where is? Where are the mittens? The mittens. Very good. And now. With this, this is a great focus activity, it's great recall, memory activity, and you can also use um, alphabet cards for that. You can use whatever photo cards you have at hand. You could even use uh, alphabet cards that you can get from your local dollar store. All right, but these cards are from a, a game that we had. Let's move on to the next activity now. The next activity that we have here are these easy maces, and these are good for logic and concentration. And this is an easy maces binder that I have created here for my kids. And I'm going to link it below in the description box of the video along with the visual attention activity binder as well. So go ahead and get started with the maces here, Emily. So mazes are really great for children. It really helps with focus and concentration as they have to work through finding their way out of the maze. And as you can see, she has to really focus on not touching those black lines to be able to get out. So it really requires uh, pencil control as well as fine motor skills to be able to get out of the maze. I love it because the child has to scan the worksheet with their eyes in order to find a possible solution. And go ahead and do the next one when you're done, Emily. And scanning is a great skill used for reading and writing. And so it's important to scan from left side of the paper to the right side. Go ahead, Emily. Go to the next activity. So uh, I just truly love maces. They're really great. And they uh, give the child the ability to stay focused for a long time while they are working through these. And to be able to use their reasoning skills to find the possible solutions. And if they make a mistake, I like that I have them here in these dry erase sheets because uh, they can just uh, use a dry erase marker to work themselves uh, through the solutions. And if they make a mistake, they can just erase. Go ahead, I'm going to keep on going. Doing great. And I have the solutions in the back for those parents that have trouble with these mazes. But these are easy mazes and they get harder as, as you progress through them. And my kids have really been loving them. I'll link it below in the description box. All right, so you had fun with those mazes? Yeah. All right, we're going to put it away now. And we're going to do another fun activity. Ready? Yeah. So we have these toys in here that we just picked out from our toys. We have a lizard, a ball, a tree. We have a doll, a cup, a little baby, and a train. I want you to look at all these items, okay? And then I want you to close your eyes when you're done looking at them, okay? Because I'm going to take one of them away and I want you to focus to think about which one is missing, okay? Okay. You got a good look at them? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take one away. Close your eyes <laughs> and I'm going to take one away. Okay, one went away. Which one is missing? Um, the tree. The tree, very good. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and take another one. Ready? Close your eyes. All right, which one is missing? Um, the baby. The baby! <laughs> All right, now I'm going to get tricky for you. I'm going to take two now at a time, okay? So okay. close your eyes. Can find that baby? All right, open your eyes. What's missing? That's missing. The lizard. The lizard and? And the... And 
<laughs> you remember? <laughs> the train! Remember the train? Okay. Alright, so you just keep on going, just having different items missing and they have to really think. It's just a fun little game for them to practice their focus and concentration. We hope that you have enjoyed the video. We had tons of fun, right Anne? We're going to link below in the description box any of the resources that we mentioned. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Say bye! Bye! bye.